Hello, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk about barometric pressure changes and how that affects fibromyalgia. I'm just firing up my laptop. First thing that I need to say about this is that this was actually, what do you want, buddy? He's feeling, feeling very lost today because it's sunny, but it's very windy and cold. So he doesn't want to sunbathe outside. So he doesn't know what to do with his day. As I was saying, this video was voted for by my Patreon friends. So if you want to vote on upcoming videos, you can do that on Patreon. You can also have a newsletter and there's all sorts of like extra things. So the other thing that I want to like touch on before we get into this video is how I've not been making videos of like the scienciness, scienciness, you know, like research into specific illnesses or specific like symptoms and stuff lately. I've not been feeling motivated to do that. I just feel like it can get quite heavy and not just the researching it and the talking about it to you guys, but then all the comments that I get on those videos, which I know are so kind of you guys like talking about your issues and stuff, but it can get really heavy when I'm making them all the time because then that's all that I'm like talking about and I feel like it just gets really heavy for me. I started like spacing out between videos so that I would be able to make it less heavy for myself. And lately I just don't feel like doing them at all. Uh, this year has been really hard on me for a lot of reasons. One of them is the pandemic, but it's brought to light a lot of other things. Um, it's been hard. It's harder this year to be chronically ill than it ever was. People seem even less kind to the disabled and to the chronically ill than they ever were. It, it, it's hard to get treatments, it's hard to get care, it's hard to live in a society that's really selfish and inv individualistic and doesn't care about other people. And I feel like talking about specific symptoms and specific illnesses is just a little bit more than I can handle right now. So I am making this video as I said I would because obviously I gave this option to my patrons and I don't think it would be right for me not to do it, not to actually make it. And I've already done the research and all that. I'm just letting you guys know that I'm not probably going to be making videos of this sort for a while. I don't know if I'm never going to make them again or I don't, I don't know. But for now, I just really want to make other content. I want to make stuff that I'm excited about that I feel like still reflects my life as a chronically ill person because obviously it, I have multiple illnesses that are quite complex and that interact with each other. So it, it, it does affect every single day of my life and every aspect of my life. So it, it, it's always going to be a thing that's present in my channel, but I don't want to center myself only about that. I want to talk about other stuff that I'm interested in. Okay, so I'm sorry to my patrons for taking so long to get around to filming this. So let's start talking about this. Uh, barometric changes are changes in like air pressure, um, changes in the atmospheric um, pressure. Yeah, so that stuff changes uh, with the weather. It changes, the season is changing. You also get changes in atmospheric pressure and barometric pressure. Normally the cold and the dampness and like humidity and stuff is also related to um, drops in barometric pressure. This normally is really associated with flare-ups. Whatever symptoms you have of your conditions, like normally we associate changes in the weather with changes in our symptoms and changes with and like increased flare-ups. So you'll notice uh, a lot of us feel like when the weather changes, we will have more pain or we'll have more fatigue or we find that we have more uh, this kind of symptom, whereas in the summer we'll have more of this kind of symptom. So like we, a lot of us find that the weather has a big impact on our symptoms and kind of the severity of them and also sometimes what kind of symptoms you have. From what I found, about 80% of people with fibromyalgia report that they feel that the weather has an impact on their um, flare-up intensities and like flare-ups in general and that it has an impact on their pain levels and their symptoms. It's been proven or it's been seen systematically in studies of arthritis, for example, that there is definitely a connection 
Uh, it also has been found to be a connection in, for example, chronic migraines, which is something that I also um, live with. And so they found, and this was a, a study that was published in 2015, where they found that it doesn't even have to change very drastically to affect our headaches. Even really small decreases in pressure could induce migraines, which I found really interesting because I find that the heat um, is more migraine inducing, but I don't know, that's just an interesting thing that I found. Similarly, this was found in another study that they did in Japan. If the pressure was higher than a certain amount, then people would have less headaches, and if it was lower than that, that amount, then people would have more headaches. The way that they make these studies is people will keep like a journal or a diary of their pain levels, and then the researchers will look at the barometric changes in that area for that year, and they will compare every single day uh, of the, those, like the barometric values to the pain levels that people report. Um, and that's kind of how they do that. It's not like the best method. Uh, it would be better if you could have a better means of measuring pain levels, but pain is kind of a subjective thing. So whenever you are dealing with chronic pain, um, studies about pain is always a little bit like murky waters, I guess. Anyway, so that's what I found that was conclusive and that was like positive where it proved that there is a link between barometric changes and people's symptoms. However, it seems that when we talk about fibro, there is always like, oh, we don't know, inconclusive, meh. Every single study that I looked at that talked about specifically fibromyalgia and barometric changes was inconclusive. There were some where they did find that, yeah, potentially there could be a link, but it wasn't like, it was never a very strong link. So everybody, they didn't see it like throughout everybody was experiencing the same thing. Some people were and some people weren't. So people kept a journal um, and a diary or whatever of a record of their pain, of their like kind of symptoms, how they were feeling. Um, so it wasn't just a pain journal, it was also often um, kind of emotional as well. And then obviously, like I said, researchers will go back and look at the pressure changes in that area for those people throughout those days, like the times when they found that they um, were experiencing more or less pain. And yeah, there was never really a conclusive link found, which is so interesting because I, like I said in the beginning, 80% of people feel like weather has an impact, a negative impact on their, on their condition. So we feel like, especially I think the most popular opinion is that when it's cold and damp and wet and rainy, we feel more pain, we feel more stiffness, we have a harder time getting around. And it's really interesting because there isn't a proven link. That doesn't mean that there isn't a link. Uh, it could be something else. It could be uh, not related to the barometric pressure. It could be something else. Like it could be another factor that that's not what they're looking at, you know? But the truth is that we're when we talk about barometric pressure and changes in flare-ups and, and changes in, in symptom severity for fibromyalgia specifically, it, there hasn't been a proven link. There's always a balance that you have to reach when you are doing research into fibromyalgia um, as, as a patient. Just because there isn't a proven scientific method or a proven scientific um, link between you know whatever factor and your symptoms it doesn't mean that there isn't one it just means that it hasn't been researched yet there are things that have been disproven successfully like the myth that fibromyalgia is an autoimmune condition because it isn't there have been things that have been disproven and things that have been proven um but there are a lot of things that are still up in the air and we don't know yet so it's important that we as patients, we maintain uh, a level head and we do research into scientific methods and into scientific studies that have been conducted in correct manner. But it's also important that we don't get discouraged or too encouraged by things that we see. We also have to remember that fibro is a very dynamic condition and it's very different from person to person. We don't all experience the same, the same thing. In it, like I've said before, it is possible that it's not even the same condition. 
it's possible that we're all being diagnosed with one condition that can be found out in the future that it is actually uh, an umbrella term for several different conditions like an autoimmune disorder disorder is an umbrella term for a lot of conditions that are very vastly different from each other there's a lot of things that we still don't know the more i looked into it the more i was like oh, okay yeah basically inconclusive 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 um i did find a bunch of studies which i will link down below so if you want to go and read them that's um totally fair and you can do go ahead and do that a lot of studies have found that we think and that we feel like the weather has an impact but not a lot of studies have found that there is um a link between like there is like science behind that you know what i mean it, it's hard to explain but like yeah so as i was researching and i was starting to think like okay so basically there's no conclusive evidence about this what else could it be causing this because if it's not the barometric changes then what is it like it has to be something you could also say that it's like a suggestion thinking that the weather can change how you feel when you see the weather change it would make you feel that way that's one of the explanations that i saw but that doesn't really make sense to me completely because a lot of times when i wake up i haven't opened my blinds yet and i feel different and my body feels different and i know what the weather is going to be like without looking at the weather and I don't often look at the weather like on my phone. I check it out like for, to see what temperature it is in the morning so that I know whether or not to take a coat to walk my dog. Basically, that's as much as I look into it. I don't go and see weekly forecasts. I just, you know, slide on my phone to where it says like it's 14 degrees, right? So I'm like, okay, cool, 14 degrees, let's go. It's you know, coat weather. But I feel those dif those differences bet before I see the weather. Even before I knew that this was a thing, before I got diagnosed, before I was even aware of what fibromyalgia was, I already was sick and I already felt that. I already felt the changes in the weather had an impact on my well-being. So it was there before I even knew about it. And I'm sure a lot of other people have experience the same thing that isn't a reasonable explanation to me because i don't find that it's reasonable to just blame people for like oh you suggest that they're gonna have a headache and they have a headache like that yeah sure it can happen but i don't think you know 90 percent of people with fibro which is we're experiencing this and it's just like we're a bunch of suggestive loonies you know the other reasons that i found that could be an explanatory were one, the fact that weather changes can have an impact on your mood and it can have an impact on your, um, if you're depressed, it can have an impact on your depression. So there's a lot of things like seasonal depression and things like that. So it can have an impact on your mood and the fact that your mood is impacted and will then, will then impact your nervous system and therefore will impact the way your body is feeling. One of the other explanations that I found and I shall, um, I wrote this out so I could read it to you. So as barometric uh, pressure drops right before the weather changes, this lower air pressure now pushes less against one's body. This allows tissues to expand, which then places pressure on joints and causes pain to be perceived. Another weather-related factor is low temperature, which may occur at the same time as a drop in barometric pressure. Lower temperatures increase the thickness of the fluid in our joints, making them more stiff and therefore increasing one's pain sensitivity during movement. You know, pain sensitivity and reports of pain, uh, they're subjective, they're subject subjective uh, matters and yeah, it has to do with your perception of your body and your body pain. Another suggestion that I read was that because when the weather does change, it also tends to make you be stay inside more and be a little bit more cooped up and that you would move less and therefore you would become more stiff so the one that i think is more interesting is the fact that the temperature changes would make your joint fluid different and therefore would make you feel more stiff and that would make it more painful to move and stuff and so that's kind of what i found i can you stop crying while i'm making my video i'm gonna leave all of those links below so you can go and ahead and research for yourself it's really interesting to me that we all experienced this but there hasn't been any like conclusive research done on it that's it for today i'm gonna go now if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already. You can also consider becoming a member on Patreon and like I said, you get extra stuff 
and you would be helping me keep this channel running. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.